Hey everybody, sorry it's been a while since I posted a video. The kids and I finished the Halloween video, which was a lot of fun, hope you enjoyed it. And then I was working in Europe for a week. Anyway, I'm back in Clemson, it's time to get down to business. I assign a lot of student projects. I see a lot of student work. And one of the things that I noticed over the years is that the time it takes students to finish projects varies dramatically. So I'll give an assignment. Some students will finish it in two, three, five, maybe 10 hours. Other students will come to my office and they say they've taken 50 to 60 hours and they still are just getting nowhere. And students find this really baffling. And I really found this baffling early in my career. When I started teaching, I started noticing this and I thought, how could they possibly be taking that long to finish these projects? And I didn't really understand it until I started asking questions about their process, how they were going about it, and then it started to make perfect sense. And so today, I wanna to try to help you be a dramatically faster programmer the faster students can explain their code, they can explain their strategy, even if the code isn't working quite the way they want it yet, they know how it's supposed to work and they know what pieces they've put into this puzzle to make it do the thing that they want it to do. The slower students typically can't do this. So why are you using memcopy right there? Man, I really don't know. That's just, I thought that's how we're supposed to do it. To do what? What, what is exactly that you're trying to do right here? I mean, that's, it was, it was in your example code, and so I just thought I'd try it out. But then I, I found some, some Stack Overflow code that, you know, it was, it had string copy in it, and I just, but that's seg faulted, man, so I took it out. Did you know why it was seg faulting? No, man, seg faults are the bane of my existence. Sometimes I'm lucky, and sometimes I'm just not. I just think seg faults hate me. Now these answers may seem really silly, but I get them all the time. Like this, this conversation happens every semester with many students. So what, what it boils down to is that some students, the faster students, dig deep and really try to understand the functions, the classes, the APIs that are at their disposal and so that they can apply them to solve problems. The slower students are trying to look for a shortcut. They're trying to look for a way, they, they want to use Stack Overflow or some other online code help site, whatever it is, they're trying to find a way to get around it. And early on with, with really simple projects, so early on in their program, the, the outcome of these two approaches may not be that noticeable. But as things become more and more complicated, the difference becomes huge. So I don't want you to spend 50 hours on your next project. So today I want to give you three specific things that you can do to become a faster programmer today. And I'm not just talking about a little bit faster, but dramatically faster. The first is that you should never take code on faith. If code is in your program, you should take the time to understand what it does. Faith is great for church, but faith is not okay when you're programming. If you have a piece of code or some syntax that you don't understand, go find some documentation. Dig and dig and dig until you understand what it does and do not proceed. Do not move forward until you understand what that code is doing. And this may feel like the slow way, but it will save you so much time in debugging down the road. The second is to read the man pages. Many students don't know what man pages are. In a Unix-based system, the man pages are essentially the documentation for a lot of common functions, terminal programs, just a lot of different things. And the way it works, you're in the terminal very simply is you just type in man space and then whatever it is that you're looking for help on, and it pops up documentation that tells you things like what arguments does this function take? What does it return and how does it behave? It may also tell you in, in some cases if there are any known bugs or limitations or just things you need to be aware of. As a side note, sometimes you'll notice that there are multiple man page entries for one name. Like if I say man open, there happen to be a bunch of things called open. The first one that pops up here is actually the open terminal command, which which will open a file using the default program for that file type. And that maybe that's not what I want. Maybe I wanted the open function that opens up a file. In that case, one thing you can do is do man a. You have the dash a option that says I want all of the matching pages. And then I can cycle through and oh yeah, yeah, that's, that's the one I want. And of course there isn't a man page for everything. You know, maybe you're on Windows and there isn't a man page for much of anything. And anyway, I mean, that's fine. The point is, is to go find the documentation. If you're in Java, this is the Java docs. If you're in Linux on C, it's probably man pages, but maybe you're looking at some library that has online documentation somewhere else. The point is read the documentation. This helps you accomplish the previous one so you don't have to take these things on faith. Strategy number three 
solve all your mysteries. So you wrote a bunch of code, you thought you knew what it did, and it's behaving mysteriously. Now, a lot of times students will try a couple things and occasionally, you know, they're just kind of randomly trying stuff and occasionally something seems to work, the problem seems to go away, they don't really understand why, and they move on. This is a bad idea. So when you don't understand a bug, you are destined to repeat it. That's just the way programming is. You need to understand why that bug occurred. So when you have mysterious code, when you have program behavior you don't understand, get out your GDB skills, look at the documentation, get a second pair of eyes, whatever you need to do, but understand why the behavior you're seeing is the behavior that's happening. And, and that's it for today, folks. Three strategic things that you can do to be a dramatically faster programmer. Some of these things may seem obvious to you, for others this may be brand new. Whether this is a helpful reminder or whether this is eye-opening news, I hope this helps your next project to go faster and with less stress. And until the next video, I will see you later.